Hello and welcome, whether you are returning or joining this channel for the first time, it is so good to have you. Before we dive into today's video, I do have to address a couple of things here. Um, first, it's obviously been a while since I've uploaded. For those of you who aren't aware, I actually had a pretty severe migraine attack at the end of March and beginning of April, and that's why I didn't post any readings last month. I really tried to get stuff out to all of you, and even after the migraine attack, I was in what's called a post or migraine hangover, and it was really just difficult to express myself, and that's actually what I was having before I had my attack as well. So hopefully if this ever does happen to me again, this was the first time it's ever happened, um, I'll at least be able to know the signs. However, this sort of does lead me into the second announcement that I feel like I need to make. Um, I really do feel that moving forward, I am going to separate the tarot and astrology into different videos for the signs. So I will still be uploading and in fact, potentially uploading more. Uh, but it really just became very apparent with this migraine attack that I've put myself under so much stress and strain, and I've really tried to fit everything into these neat little boxes, and honestly, it it's, it's very challenging for me to do, and I feel like moving forward, I would really like to go back kind of to the root of where I began, where it was more of an intuitive style read, uh, while still also using astrology as well, because I do feel like they're both very useful tools that can help orient a lot of things for us. And so I, I think sometimes, too, these messages can get just, like, repetitive. Um, and of course, I feel like whenever I do a tarot reading, it's always going to incorporate astrological elements anyways. That's just how my brain works. But I think it's nice to kind of dial that back and just let that more flow in naturally. Uh, so that might be something that may not even be much of a big deal to all of you. Maybe it's just kind of a bigger deal to me because I put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, so I appreciate all the support that you have given this channel, and actually a lot of people did reach out to me, ask me how I was doing, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, definitely be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the bell notification. That not only helps you stay up to date with what's in the cards for you, but it also helps spread these messages and energies that you may think be helpful for other people. So they're kind of your tools as well. And I do have a link in the description of this video for my website where you can book a personal reading or distance Reiki session, as well as links for all of my other social media accounts. Oh boy, Capricorn, it looks like we are going to have a talk this month. Um, I just was shuffling the deck. I had a few cards fall out already, and this was kind of an interesting combination because we had the Seven of Cups or I'm sorry, the Seven of Swords, Five of Cups, and Judgment all coming out in reverse. So the Five of Cups is what came out first. And this is interesting because when I actually saw this, it felt like there were some emotions, some really intense feelings, things that you thought you had moved on from or emotions that you may not have clocked and this felt pretty confirmed with the seven of swords in reverse as well and it feels like there's been maybe a conversation or a resolution that you thought you made uh, maybe with somebody or even just with your own emotions and it feels like something has happened uh, in the past month maybe with the eclipses or mercury retrograde where it's like oh, this is still an issue. And this might even be more than one thing. That's actually kind of what I'm getting for most of you. There's just been this sort of review of like, oh, actually, no, this stuff is still going on. These feelings are actually still here. Something isn't fully healed or resolved with the judgment in reverse. And kind of looking at the astrology where we've been, it's very likely that this could be coming up in family dynamics for many of you. Um, so that could be taking the form of childhood trauma. That could be taking the form of relationships with family members or people you even consider family members. Or again, even just your own emotions. That could also be very implicated here 
because we had an eclipse in Aries, we do still have a lot of Aries energy, even though we are technically in Taurus season at the beginning of April. Um, so there really is all of this energy that's really kind of like a about emotions and, and depth. And with Mercury having been retrograde in the sign of Aries, I'm actually not surprised to see all of this energy coming up in the past for you. And this still kind of feels like it is rippling into May as well. So really, really interesting energy here. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I, I, again, I don't feel like this is just about one thing. Yes, this could be about you and other people or you and some person that you're very close to. But to be completely honest, Capricorn, it feels like there is this acknowledging like, oh, you know, I, actually, maybe this pattern that I thought I healed isn't as resolved. Um, which is a, honestly like really important awareness. And I think we've all been there, you know, like no shade, no, no judgment there. Um, <laughs> judgment in reverse. Uh, but it, it just feels like you're kind of confronting some things that you thought you had moved on from or moved forward with. Uh, so what else do we have for Capricorn? Um, and what's kind of interesting too is actually at the start of May, we do actually have Pluto going retrograde in the sign of Aquarius. Now, why this is really important for you, Capricorn, is that Pluto has actually been in your sign since 2008, and it's kind of been dancing back and forth between you and Aquarius, I believe since 2020 or 2021. And this has been really kind of about you wrapping up cycles, finishing cycles. And um, Pluto is going to be going retrograde in your sign one more time this year in, in October, I believe. Um, actually, let me just double check that. I do have my astrology notes right in front of me here. Uh, yeah, Pluto is going to be going retrograde in your sign. Um, where is it? It's September 1st, actually. Um, and then it's going to be going direct on October 11th. So it's only going to be in your sign for about a month. But you might already start to feel this kind of reverberance from the past, something that's very deep, something that's very profound, some sort of transformation process that's honestly been pretty challenging. Not gonna lie, Pluto energy can really just kind of rake us through the coals, it feels like, uh, because it's all about death, rebirth, and then transformation. Um, so you've gone through this really powerful process really for the past couple of decades, and you are finishing it up. But I, I can't help but wonder if this is already something that's kind of in your orbit now. There's something that you are finishing up, a cycle that you are finishing up, some level of healing. And I just heard it feels like I'm never going to heal. Am I ever going to get over this? Am I ever going to be in a different place? And I feel like you will. But that's just kind of how you're feeling now. And of course, right as I say that I have the fool. Love that. There is a new beginning here, Capricorn. And sometimes you need to take a step back in order to take a leap forward. And that's really what I'm getting here with this energy. Because there is something new taking place for you. And I feel like that's already happening in May. There is a new beginning, a new journey. We do actually have a new moon in Taurus on the 7th, which is a very exciting one. Um, because this is very, uh, very much about passion, creativity, and even romance. So you might be meeting someone new or putting yourself out there. Love is in the air for you, Capricorn. I just have to say that, at least as far as the astrology is concerned. 
Um, but there is also still a lot of deep healing and maybe even some pain that's kind of being tapped into because Chiron is going to be very active this month as well. Even in the first week of May, we have Mercury coming together with Chiron in Aries. Chiron is the asteroid, the wounded healer. Um, and this is a very kind of, it, it can be kind of like triggering conversations, but ultimately lead to healing. Um, and again, Aries is your soul, your fourth house, your home, um, your family, your inner child. And we do also have uh, Mars conjunct Chiron at the end of this month as well. So there might be some, some tension, some conflict that needs to get sorted through. But there is new beginning. And maybe you're even afraid of taking this leap. And you don't need to be fully healed to experience love. Or to experience the things that you want to experience. And I think that's... Sometimes a trap with the self-help world or this kind of spiritual world, we get so focused on self-growth, self-improvement that we can fall into this trap of never feeling like we're really going to get there. Because we're ever evolving. <laughs> Interesting. We do have the Ten of Cups, which is often about harmony, relationships. Um... Some of you are really thinking about what relationships look like for you. What does happiness look like for you? And kind of seeing that through new eyes with the fool here. Interesting. We have the Six of Cups and the Eight of Cups in reverse. Um, oftentimes Eight of Cups upright is about moving forward or leaving something behind, but in reverse, it really does feel like there is something that you need to revisit or review. Um, and I know I was talking about relationships. This doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting back together with an ex or anything, but maybe there, there is some sort of conversation that's happening there that, that's kind of helping you move forward. And again, I, I just have this very strong sense of like, you're kind of running back to leap forward. You know, you need to kind of give yourself this momentum here. That's going to be the, the movement for you in the month of May. So you aren't regressing. You aren't going backwards. You're actually about to leap forward. And I even think of kind of like a, a tidal wave when there's a big wave that's coming in. First, the shore actually recedes. It can look really creepy, actually. And then all of a sudden there's just this huge swell, this, this new energy that is coming in. So even if it feels like you're, you've gone backwards or regressed or you haven't really gone as far as you thought, there is something new coming in here, Capricorn. And this does actually feel like it's very connected to relationships, uh, to the heart for you. And it's like you're reconnecting with a very important part of yourself. There's like an inner journey that you are taking this month. What else do we have for Capricorn? Wow, we have the Page of Cups. So again, this could be about a romantic offer. Um, someone who is courting you or very interested in you. Um, or maybe there's just like an emotional offer that is being made, something that really is important to your heart. There could be very important conversations that are happening. Um, and I, I think this is kind of already something that's ongoing, really, because with judgment, five of cups, seven of swords, all in reverse at the very beginning here, it's like there are some really important talks that are happening and it might feel like you're having the same conversation over again, but it's different. I really do feel like it's different. And so it's important to be willing to have these heart-to-heart -heart conversations. And there's just so many cups on the table. We have the Five of Cups, the Ten of Cups, the Six of Cups, the Page of Cups, the Eight of Cups. There's a lot of stuff with emotions here. This is a very emotional month for you. 
uh, which again isn't surprising because we do still have a lot of activation in your Aries fourth house of your heart, of your home, of your family. Um, so there's just a lot of like bringing your walls down, but that actually does help you connect with people and be vulnerable with someone. It feels like there is a relationship that's either beginning or just going very well as you're having these really important conversations or connections. Anything else for Capricorn? Where is this going? Um, we do have a really interesting full moon at the, the end of this month in your 12th house in Sagittarius, which for you corresponds to the subconscious spirituality, your intuition, and interestingly enough, uh, bad habits, self-sabotaging patterns. Um, so these things that you thought you moved on from, maybe this is part of you really ending those cycles because that's what the full moon is about. It's this period of illumination, but it is also the peak or resolution of a cycle. So it feels like you are healing on a very, very deep level this month, Capricorn. Um, and that could very well be kind of resolving around the 23rd when this full moon is taking place. And this is actually the same day that we have Jupiter and Venus coming together in Taurus. Now, this is actually the luckiest day of the entire year. This is a great time for manifestation. Even though full moons in general are usually more about something coming in, maybe some manifestation is being realized this month. And for you particularly, that could be about romance, uh, but it could also be about a creative project or something that you're just really passionate about. Um, and Venus and Jupiter are actually coming together at the critical or last 29th degree of Taurus, which makes this conjunction especially powerful. And then Jupiter is actually going to be moving into the sign of Gemini, uh, which could be about you um, really focusing on your health or your routines. I feel like this is a really good time for you to commit to a creative practice, which actually is also very connected to the Page of Cups as well. So a lot of really exciting dynamic stuff particularly in the second half of May or end of May. Um, we do also have, uh, again, Mars and Chiron coming together in Aries. There's, again, a very emotional and important conversation, maybe even some conflict that comes at first. Um, but we do have the Magician, so very powerful manifesting energy here. Um, again, I, you know, Magician actually came up in the other reading so far too. So very powerful month for manifestation. I would really work with that on the 23rd, even if that's not something that you usually do. Um, really visualizing something, really engaging your senses, uh, and really setting those goals and also following through. That's important as well, right? Um, but it, it could even be a time where manifestations are finally coming to fruition, and that makes sense with the full moon as well. Um, and, like, part of this, like, review, there's also manifestations of things that you forgot about that are finally coming true. maybe even wishes that you sort of gave up on, or you just have this weird sort of full circle moment of like, oh, I have this thing or I'm at this place that I always really wanted to have or be at. And I didn't even realize that it already came to fruition, that I already realized this until just now. So that could be something that's kind of cool happening for you this May. Um, and we have the Emperor. Actually, this is Aries energy, so it's kind of funny that this is coming in, but this really does feel like a powerful time of you building something that really matters to you. And it feels like there's uh, some really important purge that's helping you step into your power. You are manifesting your legacy, your empire, what it is that you want to create. 
you are very, very powerful by the end of this month, Capricorn. And ironically, you get into this place of power by being vulnerable, by feeling your feelings, letting yourself really process and heal on a deep level. Some of you may be reconciling with someone. And again, that doesn't always mean that you're getting back together with your ex. Maybe it does for some of you, but it feels like your heart is just healing from something. And I actually get, am getting something, Capricorn, where it's like there was something that you were manifesting that you thought wasn't meant for you and you kind of gave up on it. But you're kind of realizing in the month of May, no, I actually do really love and care about this thing, or maybe person, but it feels more like a thing, a, a goal or aspiration. Um, and you are now recommitting to that. And there's a lot of power behind it now because you're, you're healing the internal blockages, the things that prevented you from being as successful with something or achieving something that you weren't a match to before. Wow. You have to let me know what this is, Capricorn. This feels very, very powerful for you. And, and maybe even writing it down in the comments below, claiming this manifestation, claiming this new chapter, this feels really, really good. And there's just a lot of things in your life that are coming together, even if it doesn't feel like it right now. Um, wow. Anything else for Capricorn? I actually want to pull some animal cards for you. Where is that deck? Here it is. What are the animal messages for Capricorn? Show us clearly, please. I just called this the hyena. Now, the hyena is a very interesting card. It's a little bit of a trickster. You know, hyenas are very much known for that kind of laugh or cackle. And very often when this card comes up, um, it's almost like there's something that you've been hiding with humor, or there's been a mask. There's something that you haven't taken seriously, and it's usually a goal. And because of this, there's kind of this half moon. There's this lack of fulfillment. Some of you have not taken yourself or your dream seriously, or you just figured, well, that's never going to happen. But something's changing. I really love that this card just came out because I, I really felt like this is what I was just picking up. Um, anything else for Capricorn? Anything else for Capricorn? We just had a Stingray flip over, which is kind of like moving with the discomfort, but it didn't fall out of the deck. So I'm going to keep shuffling here. Um, any other messages for Capricorn? Yeah, the energy feels like growing pains. Whoa, okay, too many. Show us clearly, please. Is it you? I think it's you. Interesting. Mmm, okay. So there's two more. I have the tiger and the oyster. And the tiger is very much about being fearless, going into the darkness and knowing where your power is. It's actually very powerful to go into your fear to go into the places that scare you this month. So do your shadow work, especially with the full moon uh, in Sagittarius. You're really gaining access to a lot of things that are usually hidden to you. Um, and tigers do have that very heightened perception and awareness. So you might be feeling very sensitive as well. Uh, but it's actually interesting because with Oyster, 
it's like you're going within and finding this pearl, you're finding this light, this gift that you've always had, but you've maybe been too afraid to share with the world. And by itself, Tiger is actually kind of an energy of withdrawing or, or taking some space for yourself. But I'm actually getting the message with this combination that you actually do need to open up in a way that might feel very vulnerable and scary, but it's very powerful to do so. It's very necessary to do so. You have a gift that you need to share with this world. This does actually feel like something that you are creating or making. Um, for some of you, there is also like intuitive or spiritual gifts that you're tapping into as well. With the full moon in Sagittarius, your intuition is, is being very defined for you right now. The tiger has the moon over its third eye. So again, there's a very heightened sense of awareness and that could be part of your gifts. Um, but whatever these gifts are, you are meant to share them with the world. And I'm going to be honest, Capricorn, it's never going to feel like you're ready, which is where we began with this reading. The, the fool came out. You're not going to feel fully healed. You're not going to feel fully comfortable, but you need to take this chance for yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. You're not supposed to give up on the thing that you yearn for, the thing that feels like your purpose. This really feels like an important reading, so I, I really hope that this is reaching those who need to hear it. Again, let me know in the comments down below. Definitely be sure to hit like and subscribe. Uh, that way you can support this channel and actually help this message reach the people who need to hear it because I do feel like there are people who need to hear this this month. Um, you're also more than welcome to check out the other videos, maybe for your moon or rising sign. Um, there could be some messages in those videos for you as well. Of course, you can find all the links in the description of this video for personal readings, distance Reiki sessions, and donations for those of you who feel so called. And I will see you all in the next video. I'm wishing you a very happy and blessed May, Capricorn, and I do hope that you take this chance on yourself. Take care.